Hey everybody, welcome to Let God Podcast. Just a quick intro, I'm Mary Hannah. I'm Aya Fair. And I'm Wanipa. And we are... <laughs> Let, Let God, God Podcast. Podcast. Let God Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We hope y'all have had an amazing, blessed, relaxed week. Relaxed, relaxing. I don't even know, y'all. You can tell I ain't been in school for a minute. Anyway, um, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about um, cancel culture. Um, so, yeah, um, we're going to pray first, though. Okay. Dear Lord, we just thank you for another time in which we can just talk about the issues of the world, share our thoughts Lord, we pray that you speak through us, that we wouldn't say anything that you wouldn't want us to say, Mm. and that every single one of our listeners gets something out of this, Mm. and you just remind us of your ever-present love and your forgiveness. Yeah, we pray that you help us to get through this conversation and to always speak in love. Amen. 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 Um, so yeah, y'all, as I said, we're going to talk about cancel culture today. I'm just going to start off with a definition. So we all on the same page, if I can get to my notes. Um, right. This is from dictionary.com. Cancel culture refers to the popular practice of withdrawing support for, i.e. canceling public figures and companies after they have done or said something considered objectionable or offensive. Cancel culture is generally discussed as being performed on social media in the form of group shaming. So Guys, what are your initial thoughts about this definition and, I don't know, cancel culture as a whole? Mm. Well, I think that the definition, like the fact that it highlights this element of group shaming means that cancel culture is definitely very distinct from just plain criticism, which I think is something we really need to highlight because my opinions on cancel culture and my opinions on criticizing people and holding people accountable for things they've done and you know correcting people in love it's very different because those two things come from very different places so yeah Mm -hmm. I think also it's important highlight is um, public figures and I think nowadays public figures influencers celebrities they're put on a pedestal or just elevated in society which I think most of them don't want to be on that level Mm -hmm. because it brings so much, like people are so opinionated about your decisions and just people seem to put them to a higher moral standing. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. I, I feel that especially with like social media influencers. It's like, okay, I get it. They're called influencers, but at the end of the day, like, they're your average early yeah. 20-something, usually, they just do people make-ups. from the UK. <laughs> they're just doing their makeup, <laughs> just T-T's putting their fashions. Whole. Literally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just trying to collect some bag on the side. Mm. And I feel like holding them to, to one, you know, extremely high standard is very dangerous. It's dangerous to hold anyone on this mm-hmm. earth to a high 100%. standard. Because let me tell you this fact that will just help you get through the rest of life is that humans will let you down. Definitely. <laughs> Period. Point blank. Period. <laughs> the only person you can hold to that standard, in my opinion, is God. Yeah, hundred percent. Because he's consistent, unlike mm. humans. So, yeah, I feel like just as a preliminary point, maybe we should all just rethink our group, like our communal conscious, I guess, towards mm. towards influences. Yeah, mm, definitely. And I think like I, when it comes to public companies, it becomes a little bit, I guess, more controversial because as we've seen with like black lives matter and like various different i guess social initiatives or like social justice yeah initiatives over the years over this past year particularly like it becomes easy to like commercialize certain issues and like just try to be like mm. yes we're gonna post the black square blackout mm-hmm. tuesday we'll just post our we stand with black you. hand yes <laughs> <laughs> we stand with you Ooh, excuse me and it's like um honey where are the people of color on your on your board? Mm. Open your purse, darling. Let us see. Where how you... are your black models? Period. And Period. we're not talking Period. about them racially ambiguous. May or may not be black fishes. <laughs> <laughs> Baby boo. <laughs> no, honestly. Um, mm. So yeah, mm-hmm. um, I think yeah. There's a difference also between like public companies, as in public figures or companies, because yeah, there are people behind it, but sometimes they have, I don't know, they're sort of behaviors that are critiqued are a little more overt and sort of a little more severe I think because it's like you are 
you, like you have a platform. You're not just a one individual person. Like you have several influence. dozens, if not hundreds, mm-hmm. yeah, of people under you, um, and a huge influence. So if you are treating, or if you are, yeah, if you in the past have treated important issues in a very trivial way, like that is very, very problematic. Um, mm. But in terms of like critiquing people, then for like Christians mm. or people who are non, um, who yeah aren't Christians at the moment or yet, hopefully. Um, <laughs> how do you how do you feel about like I guess critique denouncing people within like the Christian community? People yeah, so like if you critique. saw if you saw my tweet from like oh I just got Twitter in 2018, so y'all can't even find nothing. <laughs> Same. Joined in 2019, gang. <laughs> and you know what? Ever since they've been doing that little cancel thing, I go back and I delete anything that says man, anything that says stupid, <laughs> anything, that, <laughs> anything that says hate, harlot. I'm like delete. <laughs> <laughs> delete, delete, because y'all not gonna come for me today. Anyway, that's besides the point. <laughs> so if I said something wild like, "Oh, um, I don't even know," I don't, you, you just anything that you've seen on the TL, people said in the past. If you saw me say something like that, whether or not I was in Christ in quotation marks mm-hmm. at that time, like how would y'all come at me? Presuming you're, maybe we weren't the best of friends, or we weren't, we weren't that close. Mm. So I, I guess for me. What comes to mind is like the recent incident that happened. I'm sure we all saw yet another occasion of dark skinned black women being dragged up and down, down mm-hmm. and up on the TL. Like what's new? <laughs> Anyways, the response I saw from a lot of quote unquote Christian Twitter to that was kind of, it was a little bit irritating for me only because I feel like people preach this message of forgiveness which is definitely Mm -hmm. correct like do not get me wrong god forgave us even when we were sinners christ died for us romans 5 8 like Mm -hmm. point blank period and we should forgive others because christ has forgiven us but at the same time that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take account for people's hurt and that you shouldn't treat with that same love the people who have been offended by people's actions Mm -hmm. and and just to go on and just point blank be like you can't cancel anyone only jesus can cancel people (laughs) and like instantly take the side of the aggressor rather than taking a stand for the victims and bringing justice to the aggrieved Mm. you want to just jump on oh well you should just be forgiving people well i don't know if you've got the full picture there do you know what i mean yeah yeah no, definitely. I think when he, it was you who said it at some point, and it actually made me laugh. Like, I think about it sometimes. It just made me laugh. Uh, she <laughs> said, you people talk about some only Jesus can cancel you. She said, it's true. But you know Jesus' cancellation is permanent. That cancellation <laughs> is eternal. It's, an it's eternal. Cancellation. So that one's very severe. Use that with caution. Mm, yeah. Exactly. To say only Jesus can cancel you. Yes, sir. And if you keep hurting people, Jesus will cancel you. <laughs> and you would rather I had canceled you on the TL. <laughs> Then Jesus canceling you in eternity. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Um mm. I think to go back to um Mary Hannah's question, like how I'd respond. It mm. depends how long ago it was. Mm. If it was like five years ago and it's clear that what you said doesn't ascribe to what your beliefs are right now. I don't think me quote tweeting your thing and saying this you <laughs> <laughs> I think oh it does God. anything mm. because it also doesn't leave space for redemption and change of belief. Mm. Right. Mm. But if right. if it was like me and you, and I I just came across something and you think I'd be like, do you still believe this? And if you don't, better delete it. Mm. <laughs> it's still be exposing her in front of how many three hundred <laughs> followers. <laughs> She's trying to plug her YouTube channel, guys. Subscribe. Yes, actually, I got people asking me questions. It's I am for a. Y A N F E space added by your A D E B A Y O on YouTube. I I think I could have said that, but I'm gonna be her promo for today. Mm-hmm. So that is her channel. Go subscribe. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway. Yes, ma'am. Um, but I yeah, I think that's a really good point that you make, I Fe, because I think one issue that I have with cancel culture is the fact like, and I'm gonna use Nella as an example because the crucifixion that she received in the media was just and in social media was just ridiculous to me yeah extreme just very extreme and I think that the length of time ago that it was and the fact that people clearly know her now as someone who's very supportive of black British culture Mm. it it just seemed to me like people were cancelling from a point 
from a point of view of malice yeah and i think the perspective from which you go to critique someone has a lot to do with whether or not the cancellation quote unquote is acceptable because i really believe that some people held things against her and they were there were things about her that they just didn't like whether that's mm-hmm. her success whether it's her personality and they were looking for any opportunity to just come and drag her mm-hmm. and they used this as an opportunity to bring all sorts of horrendous things mm-hmm. you know what i mean about her and dm her all sorts of really malicious things and i just think that that sort of thing it's not just simple critiquing yeah mm-hmm. and most times like it's not even people that feel personally offended by what has been said is people that just want to see blood mm-hmm. yeah which yeah. is not right in my opinion yeah yeah i definitely agree and sometimes it's not about bringing people to accountability but it's purposely looking for something that you can use against them especially when they're successful or when they're just getting success mm-hmm. definitely and i think as both of y'all have said that comes back down to the motivation behind it particularly like as believers like if the Lord has, if the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as yourself, like it's love, right? Mm-hmm. As that's we, that's what we could say. Like I guess the message of Christ is, and that's what the biggest commandment for us is, is love. So if our motivation behind the way in which we interact with people or critique people isn't love, isn't to be like, yo, we trying to see you like actually be better or like you need to clarify this so that we can continue to like be there and support you. Mm-hmm. If it's not love, if it's a message of condemnation or if our motivations are of condemnation and shame that we got to Like, it's got to cut. Like, that's not, that's not who God has <laughs> called us to be, you know? So yeah, I definitely agree with what y'all have said. That uh, That's the thing as well. Like you said that the correction should come from a place of, I want you to be better and I don't want you to act in a way that hurts other people. Mm-hmm. But if it's someone who you clearly see has had a change of heart and you're just coming to drag them for things they said before they had that change. I mean, what, what's the purpose? Like, mm-hmm. what are you gaining? Mm-hmm. from that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sounds very malicious or it can be it, very malicious mm, i agree but what about for now i guess change not changing the trajectory for things that are more serious than just like well colorism and um I sort of misogynistic tweets and things like that are all, are always serious but things that are i guess branch into i think more like legal or things that could take like require legal action like um, sexual assault, things like that. Um, how do we approach that? Not even from a, like a Christian perspective and just like a people interacting with other people either in real life or on the TL or whatever else. So I feel like one thing to note is that we've been talking about this very much on the side of the people that are being cancelled. But what we definitely, definitely, definitely should not forget is the people that are suffering the people that have been abused because of the cancelled person and I think like it's very it's kind of booky to me if all I see is people extending grace to the abusers and saying we need to forgive them as God forgives Mm -hmm. okay but the bible also tells you to love your neighbor your neighbor is also the victim Mm -hmm. who has suffered at the hands of the abuser so I don't know how you can be so quick to jump to say that they deserve grace and mercy but then not think about the fact that it's a real person with real trauma who's going through a real difficult experience and that we need to love and care for them, in my opinion, first. Mm -hmm. As a priority, we need to seek justice for them, make sure that they're okay, treat them with love and kindness. And yeah, I just think often like the discourse that I see from people is is so quick to be like, oh, but, you know, you can't cancel, okay park that for a second ask if she's okay Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. I also think as we keep saying that cancel culture does not equal lack um of accountability and Mm. some of these things are real crimes and they need to be dealt with with the force of the law the swiftness yeah because the fmp found (laughs) actually law is still different from um the law of god so god can forgive them if they ask for forgiveness but doesn't mean the law will break their shackles if they should be in jail (laughs) (laughs) in the penitentiary you if you need to go to the penitentiary (laughs) you know what i mean and and also like i think there's just numerous examples of this in the bible like when jesus goes to 
forgive people of their sins, he also makes a point of like correcting them and telling them, go and sin no more. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And there's even a verse in, in Matthew, Matthew five twenty three to 24. And I'll just summarize it. I won't read it, but it basically says, if you are going to the altar to present your offerings to God, obviously this is in the context of, you know, when they used to do their sacrificing and whatnot. Mm. Um, if you go to the altar to present your gift and you realize that someone has something against you, leave your gift, go make amends, and then come back and present it. So it's this idea that you can't really come before the throne of grace if you know that you've hurt someone so deeply. You should go and do your best to reconcile with them, do your best to make it right Mm -hmm. before you go to reap the benefits of God's grace for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think, as you said that, something that came to my mind, I was just trying to find the passage for it um because i think i know the parable it's in luke luke 19 when jesus met with zacchaeus if uh, those who are not um who don't know the story basically zacchaeus was this is it just me y'all or did in every like childhood show was zacchaeus like a dwarf he was actually yes i don't know if the bible said he was short (laughs) (laughs) or did we just make him short to be i thought we just literally i don't know (laughs) He was so short because he couldn't see over the yeah, crowd. He okay, yeah, I got it right. Yeah, yeah, he had to climb in the tree. Oh. Yeah, he was short. He oh, was bless, short. Him. bless him. Bless him. Um, no, and so, stop, because they'll start calling me high again. <laughs> in Luke 19, geez, tax, tax collectors, just for a little context, were like the worst of the worst. So they were like the modern day fraud men, meet like murderer, mm, Yahoo meet boys. like <laughs> Yahoo boy, 419er, like all of them together. And they were stealing from like, their brethren, so like their neighbors, their like the family, stuff like that. And so like they were real hated and he was real rich. Like he was in his bag, Zacchaeus. And so he had heard about Jesus, obviously. I and mean, so Jesus comes to the town, everybody's like, oh who that, who that, who that? Um and Jesus actually doesn't condemn Zacchaeus, isn't just like, hey you fraudster, I see what you do when you going to hell. <laughs> like you know what I mean? That was not Jesus' attitude towards him at all. Actually Jesus had dinner with him, um, as it says in Luke 19. And the key thing to and that I think is important to draw out, as Unipa mentioned, is that Zacchaeus then went to return all that he had stolen. And mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, let me see. He returned, he paid back four times the amount. And it says it in Luke 19, verse 8. He paid back four times what he had stolen. And yes, yeah, Zacchaeus could have really been in his bag, but that could have probably that would have, from what I presume, would have also like significantly uh, reduced his assets or how much his wealth. And that's a repercussion that he had to pay. So he was probably he was probably never returning to that lifestyle mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that he had of gold and of riches and all of that because he had stolen from a lot of people and he was paying them back four times as much. And mm-hmm. so, as Wanipa said, like as we think about grace and things like that, we also have to remember that God is not a God of condemnation, but He is one of justice. Mm-hmm. And so He's not going to let us. He's not going to let me get away with my foolishness. Neither is He going to get let you. Neither is He going to get Zacchaeus. The lady mm-hmm. in um the Samaritan woman at the well also in John was it John four yeah just double checked it um <laughs> when he was laughing the Samaritan woman at the well I find it so <laughs> funny how Jesus just really like just dragged her because he knew her situation and mm-hmm. I just find it funny <laughs> Jesus also didn't condemn her for like sort of having like five different marriages and things like that which was a huge stigma in those days and she the person she was the man she was living with wasn't her actual husband at the time and jesus was not like you little harlot you <laughs> are going to hell <laughs> why i wanna <laughs> i want to condemn you right here no he wasn't like that you know he was just like like she was okay a little bit of context she was getting the well going to the well in the heat of the day because she couldn't face the stigma that came with being her in her society so while everybody else would have been going in the late afternoon i believe or early morning i don't remember when um it would have mm. been cooler the people who are scientists would know but she was one in the heat of the day so that she would be able to avoid people's judgment and people stare and so jesus people stares and so jesus went to meet her there and you know showed her love and basically said that you don't have to be you know burdened or hiding or live in shame anymore like god is forgiving you and his grace is enough for you but he did tell her at the end go and sin no more as of what happened Mm. to that samaritan woman we do not know perhaps we will see her in heaven but the key Mm. thing is that jesus deal with people with grace but he didn't just let them he just didn't let it slide doing what they were doing Mm. exactly exactly and i think there's something important like two things to note here firstly 
is the way in which Jesus was condemning people. Mm. And I think there's different types of condemnation, different types of criticism appropriate for different times. Don't get me wrong. Jesus wasn't always soft and gentle. We've seen what he said to the Pharisees. He was calling them all sorts, you know, white, you guys are whitewashed tombs. What else was, was what was that one you said, Mary Hannah? Oh, get thee behind me, Satan. Christ. Oh, get a brood of vipers. A brood of yeah, vipers. Yeah, a brood of vipers, all that kind of thing. Um... But then equally, when he dealt with the Samaritan woman at the well, he was very gentle with her and, and, you know, condemned her privately. So I think there's definitely something to be said about the tone with which we go to critique people, Mm. the place it comes from, whether it comes from love or whether it comes from malice and also just like context. So the reason Jesus used to get so vexed with the Pharisees and would, you know, say you guys are like whitewashed tombs, a brood of vipers, Mm. etc., is because he saw them disgracing God and practicing um, Judaism at that time in a way that was turning people away from God in a way that was condemnatory and in a way that was ultimately not showing God's love. And that, you know, over going against the will of the Father was very hurtful to Jesus. Um, So you can see why he was getting so mad. But when it came to the Samaritan woman who, you know, she was dealing with her own sin she had her own things going on. You can see that the way he approached her was very different. Um, so I think, yeah, we need to bear in mind the way which we deal with people. Another point is just that, like, through all the biblical examples, we do need to remember that it's, like, Jesus who is condemning people. Mm-hmm. And just kind of remember, like, the spirit with which we condemn people and sometimes think about whether it's actually our place and if if it is like cancel culture and it's taking place in this mob setting on Twitter and your way of doing that is by, you know, bringing up people's dead relatives and calling people mm. names under the sun. I'm I don't think that's what you should be doing, you know. Mm-hmm. I just want to say I think that cancel culture never works. Yeah. As 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 much of a, very much a mob mentality, there's initial outrage. But then when that outrage end is down to the individual, people just go back into that place of comfort. Like if he's your favourite artist and then he came out and he he was um, accused of something and mm-hmm. it was said to be true, you forgiving them doesn't equal you supporting them. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. something that we have to remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. And- I read something sorry um I read something really interesting as well that really stuck with me is that all cancel culture does is that it leaves behind the people who are so bold and so so uncaring shameless shameless that's the word so (laughs) shameless Mm. that they don't Mm. care about public criticism Mm -hmm. Mm. and you really see that because the responses for example if we take the the colorism incident the response from um, some people was like them coming out and apologizing. Mm-hmm. Other people posted memes mean. and did. Mm-hmm. But has their following gone down? It's Not even increased. Not one bit. It's even increased. So all it does is leave behind the people that are left with platforms are the people who will say things and then don't care about the consequences. Mm-hmm. So I think we really need to reconsider as a society like how we actually go to to call people out or how we go to you know correct people Mm -hmm. because doing it in this way like it's actually adding fuel to some people's fire some people thrive off hate (laughs) some people's whole brand is you know they love to be hated and we Mm -hmm. need to remember that Mm. 100% like I'm just thinking about all the um we all sort of all three of us are like sort of makeup girls we love a bit of beauty we love a bit of bit of a bit of a beat and I'm just thinking a a little bit (laughs) I'm just thinking of people like um Jeffree Star, who mm-hmm. time and time again have said all sorts of things. Several times. And it's just every day. <laughs> if I just happen to scroll, like if his video ever comes up in my recommended, it's like um, 2.7 million views. Mm. Something, mm. something million views. His entire collection has sold out. And I'm generally so happy for him. I like, get his bag. But it's like with all the things that he has ever said from calling black women co- cockroaches, from making jokes about Ebola, for be- just all sorts. Like, and we just, uh, we're all just like, that ain't no problem. That ain't no <laughs> his problem. His purse is still full. <laughs> so full. His purse is full. And expanding. <laughs> expanding, in fact. 
and he can release trash palettes, people will still open their coins. <laughs> Honestly. We all saw that great Ashy one, as a matter of fact. <laughs> people still went to buy it. People still went. Honestly. So, it's just, I think, as you guys both said, I think it was Ayanta who said in the beginning, it's just so dangerous. I think the prerequisite to cancel culture is the fact that we put people on a pedestal mm-hmm. for the first, like, like, it's cool. I've got people that I'm like, oh, there's, like, I would love to, well, not even maybe I would love to be like them. Oh, I like their fashion, or I love the way that they speak about this um, specific issue, or I like that they're, like, first in their field when it comes to this, I don't know, sector. And that's cool and everything, but I, I always try to keep it 100 with myself. Like, yeah, I like them, but, you know, like, just like me, they're not infallible. They're not perfect. Mm-hmm. So, like, let me honor them and, like, love them for what they're good at, but not be shocked, like, when they let me down. Yeah. I think it's so important like oh no sorry continue I was gonna say that you can't put you can't put expectations on other people that you wouldn't put on yourself because I know there were some people that were talking about the colorism thing when they'd already been deleting their own (laughs) this is why so many people get this you'd on the TL (laughs) because you are bold enough to come and call someone out for their nonsense meanwhile you've done the same nonsense Mm, mm, hey mm. and some can I just say I think when it comes to like social media I think because we were all in quarantine or Mm -hmm. are half aren't in quarantine you know whatever I think some of us, I say us, not meaning us three, but just to not be sort of, not to condemn anybody or any group in particular. I feel like some of us forget that like we also live real lives and people also know us. So it's not necessarily Mm -hmm. what you do or say on the TL. It's also the way that you live your life Mm -hmm. because it's it's also the way that you treat other people. So you can say like, oh, I was in colorist on the TL, but I see you in real life. You can say I'm not sexist on the TL, (laughs) but I see you in real life. Real life. (laughs) Period. So, so like Period. it's it's just all it's it's all very very murky like the internet can be very performative and also very dangerous so it's just mm-hmm. so important that it's like as we critique and not so cancel people just remember that they're people they everybody live in a double life to be honest some people have four accounts that they tweeting from and instagram in front <laughs> best of both worlds that's the so, other thing like on the internet like you could just be anyone Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. i can go on twitter and condemn people left and right meanwhile i'm not a very nice person do you know what i mean yeah i do all sorts and the thing is on the internet and on social media everyone just feels like they're right about everything Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or that they are like very very holy yeah Mm -hmm. which is just hmm, just very self-examine Mm. you know and i think on the holy on the holiness topic particularly for (laughs) those of us who are christians and on social media i saw this tweet like a couple maybe last week and i was like there are some people who are christians and on twitter and don't think they're part of christian twitter and i was like that's me because i'm not like i'm not that's me (laughs) impossible (laughs) like that's not me um anyway and he let me not say too much let me not talk too much But I don't associate. Um, no. And it's like, um, you know, sometimes we don't have to say anything at all. Like, it's mm-hmm. not by force that I speak. Like, okay, I don't have I don't have I don't have a platform like that, but it's really not by force that I make a comment on everything. And that's mm. something that I'm definitely learning. Cause before if I see something, I'd be like, Y'all are like this, and I find it funny how and we're ta ta. But it's just like to be honest, sometimes it's it's okay. Like it's not okay, but I don't need to comment on it. Mm. I'm just mm. If I need to unadd or if I just need to pray or if I need to mute. Yeah, then mind my business and that's it. And just Mm. commit it to the Lord's hands. Let me just eat my food, stay quiet. (laughs) In fact, let me just pray for them. Mm -hmm. Let me just pray for them. Because it's really some people's hearts are on the line. Mm. Sometimes it's just a, mm, sorry to these men and women. (laughs) What they did was not okay. Yeah. Let me put small critiquing comments and pray for their souls. Yeah, literally. And pray for mine too. Because like, I think also when we critique people, it's also easy to be bitter. And mm-hmm. I just feel like bitterness can just like destroy somebody's inner person. Like it's mm. so, it's so, it's such a burden to live with. Like, oh, not even a grudge. Just the whole thing. Like, I don't like this person or this person did this. Like that is so, that is so burdensome to live with. And forgiveness can be a process. So it's not like you're going to wake up in one morning, you're going to be like, barbie and it's gonna be everything's gonna be cute and cool but at the same time like um yeah as we're sort of like critiquing or denouncing or like saying oh i'm not gonna subscribe to this person or this way of thinking or this group anymore we also as we're praying for other people we also got to pray for ourselves and be like father help me not to be bitter and father help me to extend the same mercy 
to other people that, that I would you extend. that mm-hmm. you send to me. Because I think sometimes I've been crazy, bruh. I've been crazy. <laughs> and if people were watching me for every single thing that I do, I would have been canceled two mm. times over, square it, cube it. Like, mm. so, mm. yeah. Yeah, I think it is important to bear in mind that, like, God's grace is sufficient. And I can't lie, like, that even pains me because <laughs> there's some people who I'm like... I don't want God's grace to cover you. No, I You're that. horrible. I that. Do you know what I mean? I like, that. sorry, Lord, for even saying that. But like, do you know what I mean? Like, as a human, there's people who have done things to me or who have said things. And I'm like, Mm-mm. Mm. no, <laughs> I do not like this one bit. But, you know, God's grace really can cover everything and everyone. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. The mm-hmm. fact that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And there's mm. things that I've done, which I don't even feel comfortable sharing with people but he forgives me and he loves me and all that kind of thing Mm. Mm. but with the big big but that doesn't give people the the ability to just abuse God's grace and to treat Mm. people anyhow Mm. I think that's really important because like I guess people might be listening and thinking like oh like if you're against cancel culture then you don't believe in like you know making people pay up for what they've done and whatever does someone want to like run with that thought um I think first when it comes to like uh, it's it's difficult because our human nature is to be like you and the like the laws of nature are like some every action has a reaction or response so if you are unkind like people are going to clap back to that or if you do something that is negative you're going to have a negative response and I think it, the same still applies when we are when we accept God's grace and salvation. But I think we have to then come to a point and realize that it's not that anybody is deserving, which I, I don't know how to make this, I don't know how to uh, put this together. It's no longer a fact of all of us being deserving because in God's eyes, as controversial as, well, not even controversial, as difficult as this may be to like understand sometimes, in God's eyes, somebody stealing a cookie from a cookie jar Mm, is carried the, the same, same way as some of the most heinous crimes that we see which doesn't make sense to us like mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm gonna keep it 100 like that doesn't that doesn't really equate to us but that's the beauty of god's grace that like we should be condemned for the one white light that we told just as much as somebody else who did something crazy should be mm-hmm. so i think it's no longer like when we're in christ it's no longer like this person deserves it because we all if we according to god's law deserve it it's more just like now so if I would deserve it just as they would be how would I want somebody to react to me even if they are critiquing and denouncing me because sometimes we need to be got all the way together like sometimes somebody Mm. doesn't just say like we need to be gathered expeditiously no period period and Mm. I appreciate the times that people have gathered me um and the Lord gathers me my mom gathers me like whoever it is the Lord likes to gather me I can't lie (laughs) one time I sometimes I'll be listening to a sermon I'll be like whoop gathered sufficiently (laughs) (laughs) so to summarize we should forgive others because god has forgiven us but at the same time we shouldn't cheapen god's grace by acting in a way that's wayward and hurting Mm -hmm. people and being destructive and expecting people to extend grace to us we need to consider our actions we need to stand up for the victims Mm -hmm. as well um so thank you for listening to our episode we hope that you know you've had some thoughts about cancel culture and being able to interrogate it for yourself and and you know let us know what you thought about it thanks for listening guys you can find us at let god podcast on twitter instagram and facebook we also have our spotify playlist which has our favorites for the fortnight and it will get renewed every two weeks so you can listen to what we're jamming to oh one more thing i think it's the form so guys send in like your requests or comments or concerns um it's all linked in our link tree if you have any things that you want us to discuss on the podcast in particular yeah yeah we want to know what you want us to talk about mm-hmm. also remember new episodes out every thursday 6 p.m be Set there thank you so much anyone who listened to our pilot mm, <laughs> yes we love y'all thank you for listening god bless. <laughs> that was so discombob <laughs> <laughs> just like god bless god bless bye y'all bye, bye. <laughs>